Um, so our first speaker um, actually grew up and lives in Fairfax City, and as an elected official, proposed a ban on political contributions from Dominion Power and other regulated monopolies here in Virginia. Yeah. So Senator Chap Peterson represents uh, folks in living in Fairfax in the 34th district. And in addition to trying to get Dominion money out of our politics, um, Senator Peterson made an effort to stop a bill that will allow Dominion to double charge us as customers um, for fossil fuel and uh, infrastructure and fought Dominion's latest attempt to overall how it was regulated. So we've got a great champion um, down in uh, Richmond working on these issues. Please give a warm welcome to Senator Chap Peterson. Okay, thank you, and uh, I think Mother's Day is actually next week. Okay, I just had a heart attack because I haven't bought anything yet, so, uh, and I've got, yeah, lots of mothers i got to worry about in my life, uh, one for my children and one for me. So, anyways, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for Virginia Sierra Club. Um, I know there's a few folks in the audience that, that remember me when I was on city council about 20 years ago, and, and it seems like a lifetime ago. It was a generation ago. And uh, in 2007, when I ran for the Senate, it was actually kind of my second act in Virginia politics. And when I, when I decided to run, I actually wanted to get educated about this issue. So I went to the Fairfax City Public Library, and I checked out books on climate change and energy and environment. I read everything. And I typed up a plan called Virginia 2.0. And I still keep that on my website. And I read it uh, every couple years just so I, it kind of reinvigorates me just to remember, OK, this is what we're trying to do here. And when I was elected in 2007, I got down to Richmond, and the first bill I filed was for a renewable portfolio standard in Virginia, which was a very modest bill in retrospect. It simply would have required that 10 percent of our energy in those days, which is, say, 2008, would have been through a renewable portfolio standard. You would have thought that I had introduced Marxism into the United States economy. I mean, it was just defeated, derided, ridiculed, and it ended up getting, I, I got, I don't even think I got one vote, but it, it was basically flushed away. So I came back a couple years later and I brought a bill that would require all state buildings to be LEED certified. And that got defeated the first couple of years. And then one day I was talking to Bob McDonald, who was the, the governor, he was a Republican. He's like, hey, that's a really good idea. And I actually got that passed. And then I came back the next year and got the Solar Freedom Act passed, which allows uh, homeowners, even if you're in an HOA that prohibits uh, uh, solar panels, that's an unenforceable uh, uh, covenant under Virginia state law now, thanks to the Solar Freedom Act. So, <laughs> so at the time, I thought I was doing really well. But then a couple years ago, as, as uh, our, our MC alluded to, I decided to take on the Great White. And the Great White in this state is Dominion Power. And uh, I hope you're booing them and not me, but that's OK. I uh, filed a bill that would have repealed what was called a, quote, rate freeze, which basically locked in their monopoly and allowed them to overcharge consumers. And uh, I brought that bill. It was defeated. I brought it back again. It was defeated again. And the next year, I said, you know what? I'm going to bring a bill to prohibit them from making political contributions. And um, that was January of 2017. That was 30 months ago. I don't think. If I ever do anything else in the Virginia political history, nothing else had more of a far-reaching impact. Because that idea just flew. Because these are complicated issues, and I'm happy to debate them with people, but I won't debate them with people that are, frankly, corrupted by the money that they've received. And, and I, I, I choose my words carefully. You have to know that when people come to the table in this type of argument, they're arguing based on what's best for the environment, what's best for the citizens, what's best for the ratepayers, and if one corporations allowed to put in millions of dollars in political contributions into the system, that corrupts the system. I'm sorry, it just does. And I, listen, I know all about the First Amendment, so don't lecture me on it. Now, speaking of the First Amendment, a year ago, Mountain Valley Pipeline decided to lay pipe through uh, Jefferson National Forest, and some people went up there to protest. And the National Park Service, our federal tax dollar at work, sent them away, said, you can't do that. And I said, hold on, that's a federal, that's federal land. That's owned for the benefit of the federal taxpayer. So I filed a lawsuit under the United States First Amendment to reopen the Jefferson National Forest. And I'll tell you this, I'm not, I'm a commercial attorney, okay? I'm not a First Amendment scholar, so me and my team, we were kind of making this up as we went along. And I drove down there, and, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm a private attorney, my wife and I co-own our business, so I don't do a lot of pro bono work, okay? So you know if I'm doing it, I gotta be feeling it. I got down there to Roanoke, and uh, there's a crowd of like, cameras and reporters in front of the courthouse. And I'm like, 
there must be some big murder trial today or something. <laughs> well, I got out, it turned out it was for me. And uh, it ended up that suit was not successful, but again, it was one of the first times that people were like, hey, we can take on this pipeline. We can take it on legally, we can take it on politically, and afterwards there actually was an injunction. In fact, there's multiple injunctions against the pipeline based on water quality issues and all other issues, and frankly, right now it's all tied up. So the bottom line is, on the ground, even when you're losing, sometimes you're winning. And that's one of the things I take away from this. And, and you know, this is an issue that, like I said, is so critical. It's critical to our children, it's critical to our grandchildren. And one of the things I will stress to you is, and I know we're all here to learn from each other about the environmental issues, but also the economics is important. And, and I, I use this illusion, actually I was, I was talking to the governor the other day, and I said, look, I said, when I was a child, if you wanted to place a telephone call, you could only use one company, it was Ma Bell. And you know what? We deregulated that industry and allowed new technology to come in, and you know what? Now we all carry around this. Okay, and this wouldn't have happened unless we allowed competition to take place. And as long as we allow monopolies to choke off competition in the energy industry, we won't get market-based renewables, which is what we need, because the free market's gonna bring renewables to the table, because they make sense economically. They make sense, they're cheaper, they're more cost-efficient, and also they have less environmental damage to them. So I'm convinced that in our American political system, in our American economic system, when we get away from the archaic system and bring in more competition, renewables will win. Because technology wins in this society. So I just, uh, let me close on one note, and I, I know I've talked too much, Sean, and thank you for keeping, I know, I know. Sea level rise is important. Virginia is a very low level uh, state. Hampton Roads are what I call the 757, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, that's one of the lowest communities. And you saw what happened to Houston a couple years ago? That could happen to us in a heartbeat. And we have a lot of communities down there that need protection. So this is an issue that's important for Virginia. I love this state. I love it. I mean, next to my wife, Sharon, I love it. I love the Redskins too, but that's another issue. Um, the bottom line is it's a great state and we gotta protect it. Uh, again, let me just end where I began. Virginia Sierra Club, you are the champions. Uh, I'm proud to have your support and thank you so much for everything you do. God bless you. Thanks.